the moment the world went quiet. There was a moment when the world went quiet, not outside, but online. Websites died, apps froze, and businesses started bleeding money faster than anyone could measure. In minutes, the outage became one of the most expensive digital failures in recent memory. Airlines, banks, trading platforms, even major social networks all hit the same invisible wall. But the most shocking part? It wasn't a cyber attack. It wasn't sabotage. It was something far stranger and far more alarming. This is how one tiny change managed to shake the entire internet. What happened with Cloudflare? Now, let's take it back to a moment the entire internet felt something was off. Not a glitch, not a slowdown, but a full-on freeze. In the span of just a few minutes, millions of people trying to open their favorite apps, visit websites, or access online services suddenly hit the same brick wall. Those cold, familiar Cloudflare error screens. And it didn't matter where you were, Africa, Europe, Asia, the Americas, the story was the same. Something major had broken, and the internet felt it instantly. This wasn't just a case of a couple of websites acting up. This was a structural failure. And because of how important Cloudflare is to the internet's backbone, that single failure hit the world like a digital earthquake. The outage began on the morning of November 18th, 2025, around 1120 UTC, and almost immediately, it dragged some of the world's most used platforms down with it. Users trying to access social media, airlines, banks, government portals, trading platforms, and even ChatGPT all ran into the same wall. In the most literal sense, the internet had frozen. When Cloudflare fell, everything fell. Once Cloudflare buckled, the dominoes toppled fast. That's because Cloudflare isn't just another tech company. It quietly supports almost one-fifth of the entire internet. When a provider that big takes a hit, everything connected to it, websites, APIS, payment systems, security layers, customer dashboards, flight check-ins, feels the shock instantly. The biggest question people had was simple. Who took the worst hit? During the first few minutes, the chaos felt universal. But as the picture became clearer, some industries stood out as the biggest casualties. Financial markets reported immediate disruption. Trading platforms couldn't process transactions. Online brokers, especially in high-volume Forex and CFD markets, lost an estimated $1.58 billion in trading volume during the three-hour window. Airlines saw booking portals stall. Healthcare systems had patient portals drop offline. And major consumer platforms, X, formerly Twitter, Canva, Grindr, ChatGPT, Google Sites, and even online gaming services, all saw massive spikes in error reports. In essence, Cloudflare's outage didn't just touch the internet. It reached into global finance, communications, entertainment, e-commerce, and even government infrastructure within minutes. And, while developed markets like the US, UK, Japan, and Germany experienced the most direct disruptions, driven by their higher internet penetration and reliance on services integrated with Cloudflare, the ripple effects also reached emerging markets. In places like LATAM, the impact was amplified not by higher usage, but by weaker infrastructure redundancy. In these regions, fallback systems are often less robust, meaning even brief outages create outsized complications. How expensive was the outage, really? When we talk about outages, people often think in terms of inconvenience. But this moment was much bigger than someone not being able to scroll a timeline. The financial ripple effect was huge and immediate. Companies rely on uptime to keep money moving. The moment traffic stops, revenue stops with it. For major platforms that live off transactions, every minute counts. Shopify, for example, was estimated to be losing roughly $4 million per minute during the disruption. Across the broader tech and e-commerce landscape, analysts calculated that the total economic impact reached about $250 million in direct business losses. 
Break that down, and you get a rough estimate that the internet was losing one to one and a half million dollars for every single minute Cloudflare was down. And in markets like Forex, where trades depend on speed and liquidity, the estimated loss was closer to eight to nine million dollars per minute. To put that into context, previous major outages have had similar economic consequences. The AWS outage in 2021, for instance, triggered estimated insured losses in the range of $38 million to over half a billion dollars, depending on service breadth and duration. But what made the Cloudflare outage stand out wasn't just the loss amount. It was the speed and scale of the domino effect. From AI platforms to trading engines to communication layers, the outage struck horizontally across sectors rather than vertically within one niche. The tiny software bug that broke the internet to understand why this outage hit so hard, you have to understand what Cloudflare actually does. A lot of people think Cloudflare is just a security provider or a simple CDN that speeds up websites, but that barely scratches the surface. Cloudflare functions like a digital immune system for a massive portion of the internet. It protects sites from attacks, speeds up content delivery, manages DNS, filters traffic, and even serves as an edge network for apps and APIS. Cloudflare's infrastructure stretches across hundreds of data centers around the world, and because its services sit between the user and the website, it becomes a central point of traffic for millions of platforms. So when Cloudflare sneezes, the entire internet catches a cold. As for the root cause, this outage didn't come from a cyber attack, a hardware meltdown, or some catastrophic failure at a data center. It came from something deceptively small, a software change. Cloudflare released a routine permission update inside a database used by its bot management system. That update caused a configuration file to balloon in size. And once that file exceeded a hard-coded size limit deep within Cloudflare's proxy software, it pushed the core system past its threshold and caused it to crash. In simple terms, one automated file became too big, the proxy software couldn't handle it, and because that software lives on Cloudflare's global edge network, the failure was replicated everywhere almost instantly. A single configuration error became a global outage. It wasn't an attack. It was a design flaw you'd only notice once the worst case scenario occurred. You could actually see the exact moment the internet broke. Cloudflare's own monitoring graphs showed error responses shooting from near zero to tens of millions per second. That's how fast the failure propagated. It wasn't gradual. It was immediate and absolute. Websites that rely on Cloudflare for security suddenly couldn't route traffic. Apps that depended on Cloudflare's caching couldn't load content. APIs that needed edge compute functions failed instantly. Cloudflare's engineers halted the faulty configuration within about an hour, and by 1430 UTC traffic flows were stabilizing again. By 1706 UTC, services were fully restored. But the damage had already been done. The internet had experienced one of its most visible mass outages in years, and it happened in a matter of minutes. The silent damage most people never see. Even after the systems came back online, the financial effects continued. Businesses don't just lose revenue. They lose momentum, performance, customer trust, and in some cases market value. Cloudflare itself felt the immediate hit. Its stock price dropped sharply, about 8% at one point, which briefly erased around $1.8 billion from its market cap. Investors saw the outage not simply as an operational mistake, but as a risk factor for a company whose business depends heavily on reliability. The shockwave didn't stop with Cloudflare. Investors began asking broader questions about the stability of internet infrastructure. If one configuration file could take down a significant fraction of the internet, what does that say about digital risk in general? How exposed are global systems to single-point failures? This wasn't just theoretical. 
Modeling studies suggest that if such an outage lasted even one day longer in a highly connected economy, the GDP impact could reach as much as 1-2% to of that country's daily output. In a world where digital services now account for over 17% of global GDP, that scale of disruption would be felt well beyond tech stocks. For companies caught in the disruption, the financial losses went beyond downtime. Advertising campaigns failed. Data pipelines stalled. Customer support queues exploded. Rerouting traffic and restarting systems introduced hidden operational costs that weren't immediately visible on the balance sheet. Beyond the revenue charts and market numbers, outages like this reveal deeper costs that are harder to quantify. One of the biggest is reputational damage. When customers see that a platform can go down with no warning, it plants doubt. That doubt leads to churn, lower trust, and in some cases, migration to competitors. Another hidden cost is operational. When Cloudflare went down, companies had to scramble behind the scenes. Engineers worked emergency shifts. Backup systems were tested in real time. Security protections were temporarily weakened as some organizations bypassed Cloudflare to restore basic functionality. Those decisions carry long-term risks. Then there's the strategic cost. Many companies realized all at once how dependent they are on a single infrastructure provider. The outage exposed the uncomfortable truth that a huge portion of the world runs on systems built by only a handful of companies. When those companies stumble, the global economy stumbles with them. That's the kind of systemic risk nobody sees until it's already too late. Who suffers the most when the internet breaks? The Cloudflare outage wasn't just a Cloudflare problem. It was an internet problem. We've built a digital world that relies on a small cluster of giant providers. Cloudflare, AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, Akamai, and... Even though they're strong, they are not infallible. When one fails, the consequences cascade. Experts have been saying for years that the Internet isn't as decentralized as people imagine. In theory, the web is resilient. In practice, a handful of companies manage the infrastructure, the security, the traffic, and the data flows for billions of users. That creates a dependency chain. If one link snaps... The whole system feels the strain. Regulators have noticed this too. New rules like the European Union's DORA framework now require companies to assess and stress test the resilience of their providers. It's an acknowledgement that the structure of the Internet itself needs rethinking, not just patching. And market observers have warned that as critical infrastructure becomes more concentrated, the potential for systemic impact multiplies. That makes resilience not just a technical issue, but a regulatory and financial priority. The shockwave inside global markets. One of the strongest lessons from this outage is that businesses can't rely on a single provider, no matter how strong that provider is. Digital resilience needs strategy. Companies are now exploring multi-cloud and multi-CDN setups, where traffic is split across different providers so that if one goes down, the others automatically take over. They are implementing secondary DNS providers, testing failover systems more regularly, and building internal tools to detect provider outages early. Some organizations are starting to adopt chaos engineering practices, simulating failures to ensure they can survive them. Smart companies are also rewriting their contracts and service level agreements. They want clarity on downtime, backup routes, and financial protections if a provider outage disrupts business. The outage didn't just break the internet, it exposed how few organizations were truly prepared. This shift is mirrored in market behavior. The data resiliency sector is expected to nearly double from $21.5 billion in 2025 to over $44 billion by 2030. And insurers are stepping in too offering tailored policies for systems failure and cloud downtime. 
Some carriers are introducing parametric models, where payouts are triggered automatically based on predefined outage conditions. No claims adjuster required. How this outage changes the next decade. The aftermath of the outage pushed insurers and regulators into a more urgent posture. Traditional cyber insurance policies often take hours before business interruption coverage activates, meaning an outage like this might not even qualify for compensation. That limitation has created a new market for specialized insurance products that pay out during cloud provider downtime, even if the outage lasts only a few hours. Regulators, meanwhile, are questioning how much oversight providers like Cloudflare should fall under. The argument is simple. If a company holds the keys to a significant portion of the Internet, it should be subject to the same resilient standards as critical national infrastructure. Markets reacted quickly at first but stabilized once Cloudflare restored service. Still, investors walked away with a new awareness of systemic risk. And many analysts pointed out that the outage might accelerate investment into alternative networks, regional cloud providers, and resilience-focused infrastructure startups. So where do we go from here? Outages are inevitable. No system, no matter how advanced, can promise 100% uptime forever. But catastrophe is optional. The Internet will keep evolving and the companies that support it will keep refining their architecture. After this incident, Cloudflare and others will reassess their fail-safes, remove hidden limits like the one that caused this outage, and redesign systems to fail gracefully instead of catastrophically. Businesses will diversify. Governments will push for stronger oversight. Insurance companies will build products specifically for digital infrastructure failures. and. Engineers will continue developing new ways for the Internet to reroute itself around broken components. The Internet is powerful, but not invincible. This outage wasn't just an inconvenience. It was a moment of clarity. A reminder that the Internet is powerful, but not invincible. And a signal that resilience, not convenience, has to shape the next era of digital infrastructure. In the end... The real story isn't that the Internet broke. It's that the Internet is still growing up, still being stress-tested, and still revealing the weaknesses we need to fix. And if we learn the right lessons from what happened, the next time a major provider stumbles, the world won't have to freeze with it.